Hello, and today we're going to be taking a look at the HD4350 Silent Edition by Asus. It's the worst card from the HD4000 series and was never intended for gaming. My plan is to overclock it as far as possible to put this passive heatsink to the test. Will it survive? I hope so. Let me set the stage. It's 2008. We're in the middle of the Great Recession. Obama just got elected. Wally just released. And ATI debuts their fastest cards yet, codenamed the R700 series. These processors were used in the HD4000 lineup with the RV790 XT powering the Enthusiast Level 4890. However, that card is expensive and YouTube has yet to pay me, so I have the 12th best thing, the 4350. I got it in a bulk graphics cards lot, and although it's not powerful, it's passive cooler and trigger me. I've always been told the passive coolers run hot and are more likely to cause thermal throttling, but I didn't know for sure, so that's what I'm trying to find out. But before we do, I'm gonna give this card a thorough cleaning. It seems to be in good condition, but every bit helps. Built off the TerraScale 1 architecture, this 14 year old 4350 has the least powerful GPU of its generation, the RV710. With 242 million transistors, 4 render output units, 8 texture mapping units, 80 shaders, and a core clock of 600 megahertz, this card doesn't have much to offer. And the VRAM was equally underwhelming, coming with half a gig of DDR2 clocked to 400 megahertz on the 64 bit bus. It's very similar to the reference card by ATI, except the reference card uses DDR3, has a different cooler, and different video ports. Other 4350s came with 1GB of VRAM or even a factory overclock. Ours has neither, and to add to your disappointment, it only supports up to DirectX 10, so most modern games aren't even going to be able to run. And there's the card completely taken apart. Uh, I took off what was left of the thermal paste, and it was clearly not in good condition, so I'm going to throw some more on, put the card back together, and throw it into the system. With those specs, it's clear that the card was never intended for demanding tasks, much less overclocking. One reviewer on Newegg used this card for streaming TV and films. He claimed the heatsink dispersed heat well, was reliable, and he would even recommend it to a friend. I'm guessing this review has aged like a fine milk, but it clearly had some usage back in the day. Last thing I wanted to mention before we get getting into the benchmarks was that apparently this card supports crossfire. If you guys want to see me suffer through that process, let me know in the comments below. But for now, I've got to install this graphics card into our test system with an i3-4130, 16GB of RAM, and Windows 7 running on the unbranded SSD. Installation is as easy as shove it in and hope that it fits, so... Yeah, for overclocking, I'm gonna be using AMD GPU clock tool, which allows you to set your core and memory speeds to whatever you want. The highest stable frequency I was able to get the core at is 698 megahertz and the memory at 477. There's GPU Z with all the system information, so let's see how it performs. The first game I decided to try and play is CSGO. It's a relatively easy game to run, but most importantly supports DirectX 10. Currently, we're in 720p with the lowest settings, and the game is not running very well. We are getting about in the low 30s in terms of frame rate, so I guess it's kind of playable, but like that right there, when we got that dip in frames when we died, that's where the issue lies. So I dropped the resolution down to 848 by 480, and I kind of have good news. We're getting about 57, 58, 58, 50 FPS. PS, which is pretty good and is more than enough to play this game with. The only issue, I mean, is the obvious resolution, which is not really ideal. I guess if you get used to playing in this resolution, yeah, sure, you can play CSGO on the 4350. Do I recommend it? No. On to the next game. Oh, what the f is this next game up is grand theft auto 5 and unfortunately it is running pretty badly we currently have all the lowest settings and the lowest resolution supported 800 by 600 and the game's still only getting 14 15 16 fps throughout gameplay the temperature seems to be hovering around 65 to 64 degrees celsius which is cooler than a lot of cards but then again it has a tdp of only 20 or 25 watts so it doesn't have a lot of heat to dissipate i would say so far so good because you know the temperature's still Saying where it should be, but the frame rate is absolutely abysmal. Considering that this card is 14 years old and was never meant for gaming, I guess it's holding up pretty well, actually. Anyways, on to the next test. I wonder what the recommended settings are for this graphics card. All right, I've clicked it like six times. What do we have? High, very high, medium, enabled. Uh, I don't think this is gonna go well. All right, the game lied to me. I cannot run this at medium to high in 1080p. I'm gonna turn this down. We're currently in 1080p with the lowest settings, and the uh, game's running pretty well. I 
I say that, but now that we have all these smoke effects, the frame rate has plummeted by about 10 FPS down to the lower 20s, so I'm going to turn down the resolution a bit to see if we can up the frame rate. We're now in 720p with the lowest settings, and the game is running about 10 to 15 FPS better. We're pulling about 35 right now, and although all hell is... Did the game just crash? The game did not just crash. Do you know the 4350 is still holding up pretty well? Additionally, the GPU core temperature is only at about 72 degrees Celsius, which is not bad at all, so I guess this passive heat sink is able to hold up with overclocking. But I think that's enough Left 4 Dead 2 for now. On to the next test. Well, here we are in Fortnite in 720p with the lowest settings and a render resolution of 37%, and it seems like the world is falling apart. On the bright side, the frame rate is around 40, 43, 38, 29 FPS, and somehow we're only using 155 megabytes of VRAM. I'm pretty sure the GPU usage reporting is also not correct, showing only 0 to 5 to 7% usage. Unfortunately, I don't think this is playable given the visual glitches i guess you'd call them so the 4350 cannot really play fortnite on to the next game next up is some good old insurgency 2. this game came out a couple of years after the 4350 did and it's clearly not hard to run we're currently in 720p with all the lowest settings so as expected the game is running pretty well and to answer the burning question that we all had uh no no the 4350 cannot play insurgency at 1080p after a few minutes of playing this game and back-to-back -back benchmarking other games the 4350 is sitting around 72 to 73 to 70 degrees Celsius on the core. As we've seen in some other games, that is about on par for what to expect in terms of temperatures, so I guess the 4350's passive cooler is good. Anyways, on to the next test. And the next game up is Borderlands 2. Currently, I'm running all the lowest settings in a resolution of, oh my god, it, in a resolution of 800 by 600, and I, I mean, it's kind of playable. We're getting 26 frames per second. It's not the best, but honestly, with that type of performance in this single player game you could probably play through the whole game with that i'm gonna try dropping down the resolution a little bit more to try to get a little bit more frame rate oh isn't that just beautiful i honestly really can't tell that much of a difference but we're now in a somehow lower resolution in 720 by 576 so i guess you can play borderlands 2 on the 4350 uh you could probably actually also play it on integrated graphics which isn't saying much but i guess if you have this card lying around you can do it and somehow this passively cooled card managed to survive the overclock. This actually surprised me, because in three of my four most recent videos, the cards have completely died. But it does kind of make sense, because the 4350 has a very low TDP, and you can't really overclock it that far. In terms of performance, it was about what I expected. Uh, it would have been nice to run CSGO or GTA in a playable resolution, but it's not what the card was built for. I also wanted to mention that upon release, this card cost $40. And honestly, even the fact that it's somehow still alive 14 years later is seriously impressive. Should you buy one? No. For the same price, I'd recommend getting a Quadro K620. The 4350 is well and truly a piece of e-waste. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider leaving a like or subscribing because it genuinely helps me out. If you want to join the community, there's a link to the official J Knight Discord server in the description, alongside a few donation methods that directly support the channel. If you have any questions or related comments, then leave them below and I'll be sure to respond to it. That's about it. Have a great day. Bye.